A typical drum suite might last 10 or 20 minutes. Most often, it would start with tikora, with its prominent cutter rolls, and proceed through various towels and different hands. Some of the Tassa rhythms are traditional and may date back to 19th century North Indian practices. But as in India itself, Tassa players like Ryan Ali and his uncle Lenny Kumar are eclectic and value innovation as much as preservation. Well, I, as a drummer, professional drummer, I get inspiration from um, like different music, you know, like African type music. I play like um, Swazi, I play, these are different beats that African drummers play you know, like um, belle, all that kind of stuff. I will, I will learn their beat and mix it with my type music and create Tassa beat with the African style. A different sort of innovation and a departure from Indian tradition is represented by the presence of a few female players like Donna Ram Sumer of the Evergreen Tassa group. Tassa skills are transmitted in various ways. Some people take lessons from expert drummers like Lenny Kumar, who also enjoys teaching neighborhood kids in his home in South Trinidad. Others learn by informal interaction with older players, and there is no shortage of young virtuosos. In Trinidad today, there are well over a hundred groups playing semi-professionally at weddings and other occasions.
Mikasa and bass drums are locally made by players and artisans who exhibit the same ingenuity as the steel drum makers. The tasas used to be made of clay, but nowadays are made of steel, typically the sawed-off ends of metal canisters. Lenny Kumar, a skilled mechanic as well as a drummer, makes his own tasas. Until the 1990s, tasa drum heads were made from goat skin, which, though sweet-sounding, needed to be tuned up by heating by fire and also required free-range goats with tough skins. Nowadays, most players use synthetic heads. Goat skin, however, must still be used for the bass drum, whose body is made from a heavy mango wood log. Once that is cut and chiseled out, the goat skin is prepared by scraping the hair off, soaking it, and then fitting it around a bamboo ring. Another ring, called a lock, is then used to secure the skin tightly, as done here by Sunil Mathura, who, like Lenny Kumar, is a craftsman as well as a gifted drummer. The skin is then placed on the drum and holes are driven into its edge. A strong rope, whose end has been stiffened by thread and wax, is then fed through the holes and around the bottom. Slack is taken up and the rope is tightened. Then the excess skin can be cut away. But the head must then dry over a few days and then be loosened and lifted off so that a pancake-shaped mixture called masala can be applied to the inside. Why don't you put the masala on before you no. do all this? Okay. No, it's getting wet. It's getting wet, so the masala will hold. It's okay, cool. okay. Trust me, I've tried it. <laughs> <laughs> the result of so much work is a set of drums that can withstand heavy beating and produce a thunderous sound that provokes some Trinis to cover their ears and others to dance. People concerned about the vitality of Indo-Caribbean culture lament that with every decade, several of the most knowledgeable, talented, and dynamic artists pass away or retire, leaving gaps that can never be replaced. And yet the younger generations have their own dynamism, and in their commitment to be at once Indian and modern, they can be counted on to keep turning to the ancestral Bhojpuri inheritance as a resource, not only for grounding in tradition, but also as a foundation for creative innovation. Come on, come on.